The Senate will now consider the proposal from Senator Brockman, which is also sh shown in item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? The proposal is supported. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with informal arrangements made by the whips, and I call Senator Brockman. And just before doing so, I advise the Senate that Senator Payman and I have swapped places on the speaking list. Senator Brockman. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Well, I rise on this matter of importance, reflecting on. Uh, my journey around the state of Western Australia over the last week. Uh, on Monday of last week, I was in the southwest, central southwest town of, of Katanning, a part of part of the uh, the Great Southern Region, uh, an inland town, wheat, sheep, farming, uh, a regional community, relatively small in size, around three and a half thousand people. And in that community of around three and a half thousand people, some 650 of them came to a community hall to look at a couple of issues, one of which was the ban on live sheep export. Uh, but the other issue, and I think undoubtedly the issue that drew the vast majority of the crowd, was the State Labor Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act. Uh, for those outside Western Australia, and I know most West Australians are very, very well aware of this, and uh, I, I note my two good colleagues, Senator O'Sullivan and Senator Smith, uh, will speak on this MPI today. And most Western Australians have gained an understanding of this issue over the last month or two. Uh, they probably hadn't heard about it before that. The legislation, the state Labor legislation, actually went through Parliament a while back didn't cause much of a ruffle then. It was rammed through Parliament, it was guillotined through Parliament with no debate, no upper house inquiry. Uh, but the devil was very much in the detail of the regulations that came out earlier this year. And as soon as particularly farmers, but all property owners, miners, other land users saw those regulations, it immediately, literally almost overnight, became apparent how poorly drafted, how poorly thought through and how poorly implemented this legislation was. Now, How does this reflect on this place and the federal Labor government? Well, it reflects quite directly because the origin of this, and as my friend and colleague Senator Smith pointed out earlier today, the origin of this was the Jukin Gorge inquiry that uh, took place. Um, looking at that particular incident and how it should be responded to, well, the state Labor government responded a particular way uh, with disastrous results. But we also know that the federal Labor government has committed to put in place its own Aboriginal cultural heritage laws. And we are deeply fearful because there's been no consultation with the agricultural community. As far as I'm aware, as far as I can find out, there's been no consultation with other land users, such as the mining industry, such as uh, uh, other affected landholders. Um, there's been no consultation with our shadow minister, uh, even though Labor claims it wants to be bipartisan in this area. Uh, as Senator Smith stated, we, 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 uh, we uh, fully support the protection of Aboriginal heritage. What we will fight against every day is poor, poorly drafted, poorly implemented, poorly thought through legislation which directly impacts on landholders right across, in my case, Western Australia, but has the impact to affect landholders right across this wonderful country of ours. And we will fight against that every day because we see, and not just at the Katanning meeting that I've spoken to you about, not just at the Dawesville meeting of another 250 people that I spoke about, uh, a meeting just, just yesterday in uh, Waruna, I believe it was, 
uh, again, hundreds of people coming out concerned about the impacts of this cultural heritage legislation. Farmers who have talked about whether this will send them bankrupt or to jail. And we've been asking some pretty straightforward, pretty simple questions. And the Labor government here, the Labor government here tells us that, oh, they, they want to be bipartisan about this. Um, but they haven't even talked to the agricultural community about it. They haven't even talked to the shadow minister about it. So we have to ask the question, reflecting on what we now know about the state Labor government, what has this Labor government got to hide? Senator Payman. Thank you, President. One year in, and I still cannot believe the misinformation that those opposite thrive on spreading. Aren't you tired of this constant fear-mongering? Senator Brockman has raised this MPI to make a cheap political point, and it serves as proof that those opposite will do anything to tear down the voice. This isn't just my observation, uh, but also the former WA Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Ben Whites, who told ABC Radio Perth, I think that some people are using this perhaps as a tool to try and oppose the voice. Implementing effective cultural heritage laws is an important issue and shouldn't be used to drive a wedge between our farmers and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We know too well the consequences of not having comprehensive cultural heritage laws in place. In 2020, a 46,000-year-old sacred Aboriginal site, Dukin Gorge, was destroyed by a mining company. A tragedy, but sadly a legal one. The Australian people, quite rightly, were appalled and several senior executives at the mining company lost their jobs. This is a serious issue and I'm glad that the WA and federal Labor governments are taking action. And what, about, and what would those opposite have us do? Nothing. They want us to abandon all cultural heritage protections and continue to allow the destruction of sacred sites. But wait, let's hit the pause button on this drama for a moment. Can we not both have progress and preservation? Surely there's a way to navigate this intricate dance between cultural heritage and economic prosperity without tripping over our own toes. But it's no surprise from the coalition because whenever they hear any decent idea, they say no. Instead, they try to pit one group against another for political gain. The government's commitment the government's commitment is about updating our existing national laws to make sure a tragedy like Dukin Gorge never happens again. Dukin Gorge was not just a mine site or a simple archaeological dig. It was a portal to the past, a living, breathing testament to the stories and traditions that shaped the culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, and by extension, contribute to the fabric of our society and our identity as Australians. Our goal is to have laws that better protect First Nations heritage while giving businesses, farmers and others more certainty. We can do both. Senator Brockman has obviously forgotten that both major parties agreed to protect First Nations heritage and update our national laws. Because the then minister and now deputy leader of the opposition said, and I quote, this is about government working with Indigenous Australians and recognising their right to determine what is important to them. What do they think the voice is about? It is also important, it is also important to note that the work on updated national laws was started by the previous Liberal government and has been continued by this government. An inconvenient truth, perhaps, for Senator Brockman, I'm sure. So what's changed since Duke and Gorge? shameful political opportunism from those opposite. Well, this government is above that, and I'm sure you've picked that up. We are working with First Nations groups to consider updates to the existing national laws. This process is still in its early stages. We will also be consulting closely with business, farmers, environment groups, and many others as we go. We won't be rushed. We won't cut corners and we won't be distracted by the coalition's political opportunism. I also want to make it clear that there won't be a Commonwealth takeover of state laws, nor will we be adopting or duplicating existing state and territory regimes. 
This is about updating and modernising our existing national laws to make sure tragedy like Dugan Gorge doesn't happen ever again. We are determined to strike a common sense balance to ensure better protection of First Nations heritage, as well as more sensible development and infrastructure planning. Let's be real, no cap. It is crucial to recognise that protecting cultural heritage and promoting economic growth are not mutually exclusive goals. In fact, respecting and preserving First Nations heritage can lead to sustainability and a responsible development, fostering cultural tourism and promoting an inclusive society. And while those on scare campaigns and petty politics, the adults will get the job done on our side. Thank you. Well, thank you, Senator Payne. Senator Cox. Thank you. Uh, this MPI um, that's before the chamber today uh, takes me right back to the fear-mongering that politicians undertook in response to the Native Title Act. They're coming for your backyards, they said. And yet here we are again with the Native Title Act that's pretty weak in my opinion. And not only has it failed to, not to steal um, people's backyards, but in lots of cases it's actually helped industries such as agriculture and mining. I mean, the sheer ignorance of this MPI um, just still astounds me, and I'm lost to it. So um, how dare people stand in this chamber and lecture me about protecting culture, protecting cultural heritage, protecting my land? And my people have lost so much, and yet people in this place, in my, in my home state of Western Australia, want to whinge and complain that they might actually have to put in a bit of effort and ask people whose land that they're on when they do an acknowledgement of country every morning that you're in this place, you continue to not want to ask whether there's a burial ground under there, whether there are bones there that were there before you came. 65,000 years of culture. This is our country. You built a Native Title Act to make sure that I needed to prove through anthropological links, through my connection to country, that I had an identity. You did that. And the land that pastoralists and farmers, who Senator Brockman wants to talk about, that he's met with, that are working on, my home, my home uh, town is Kojana, right across the road from Katani. My One of my ancestors' burial grounds is on the farm that belongs to my family, so it's close to home. But these pastoral acts and others were enabling legislation to steal land. And every mining company in this country and pastoralist is operating on stolen land. These laws at both the federal and state level come as a direct result of what happened at Duke and Gorge. And I served on the Committee of Northern Australia and the Joint Select Committee alongside Senator Smith. And to some people, what happened at Duke and Gorge might have just been a rock shelter, a few carvings, a bit of rock art. Um, that got in the way of business in this country. But that is our culture. That is the oldest living culture, continuing culture in the world. Duke and Gorge showed human uh, occupancy that dated back 46,000 years. And those ancient rock uh, um, shelters held on to that history and that continuing culture for the PKK people. Duke and Gorge was a sacred site and still is, but like a lot of our cultural heritage, it was destroyed and it was done legally. And you can't tell me that these laws are not here um, and that are not being disrupt disrupted and broken every single day. I'd like to think that we moved on from the dog whistling, but unfortunately we haven't. We haven't matured as a country and I wait for that moment. Thank you, Senator Cox. Senator O'Sullivan. Uh, Acting Deputy President, uh, I rise to support this very sensible motion that's been put here, put forward by Senator Brockman. Uh, I just want to read what it actually is, so that those that are following this debate actually understand it. Uh, what we have is the uh, Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act in Western Australia, and the Federal Labor Government, as it says here in uh, in the motion. Uh, the Federal Labor Government's commitment to implement cultural heritage laws similar to WA Labor Government's Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act that has caused confusion, uncertainty, disruption across every part of society, particularly local government, agriculture and mining. Now, this is absolutely true. What you see right now in Western Australia is, is confusion, 
is uncertainty and disruption across every part of society, in particular those that are operating in the agricultural area. And I know that my good friend Senator Brockman, who has you know, generations of experience for his family, but certainly his work as a senator uh, working across the agricultural sector, knows fully well. And as he outlined in his contribution, he's been at several events across the state where these issues have been raised. Now, Senator Payman came in and said that this is all about scaremongering around the voice. Now, this motion doesn't mention the voice. There's actually no conflation here. The, in fact, the only one that is conflating the, this, uh, this motion and this act with the voice is, in fact, the architect and the, the, the Premier of Western Australia, Roger Cook. Roger Cook said, our Aboriginal cultural heritage laws does the same thing as the voice. So, the only one that's actually conflating this issue with the voice is, in fact, the Premier of Western Australia. It's the Premier of Western Australia, Roger Cook, that's conflating this issue with the voice. Now, the government has an opportunity, this federal government has an opportunity to deal with this uncertainty that has been created by their colleagues over there in Western Australia by putting to bed this issue of uncertainty and dealing with it. They could rule out implementing what uh, laws that are similar to what is happening in Western Australia and have them apply right across the country. They could rule that out. Now, it's probably not in my or this party's, on my party's uh, interest to give political advice that would help the government, but in this case I will because it is important for the future of this country that you do provide some certainty. You do provide some certainty for landowners, for, for mining companies, for ag those involved in agriculture, those involved in development, provide some certainty. Rule out implementing the kind of shambolic legislation that we have operating right now in Western Australia, because it is diabolical. It is diabolical legislation that was rushed through the parliament. And that's what happens when you have a parliament that's just so, uh, so controlled. Uh, where there's no check and balance, really, that's what happens. You, you rush through legislation. It's, it's very, very poorly drafted, extremely poor, poor, poor piece of legislation. And so we've got, that's why we're in this situation. So the government has the opportunity. There were questions that were asked in question time where the, 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 le the leader representing the Prime Minister here in this chamber uh, Penny Wong, Senator Wong, had the opportunity to be able to rule it out. She could have ruled it out on the, the two questions that she was asked, the two sets of questions she was asked, but she did not. She did not. Now, we have a, a terrible situation operating in Western Australia where there is great uncertainty and, unfortunately, it's undermining the very important issue of protecting Indigenous cultural significant sites. Now, I was just up in the uh, up in the Pilbara just while, during the break that we had. And I uh, had, had a bit of business there, a bit, of, a bit of work there as a senator, but also some time with my family as well. And I went to uh, some art sites, uh, beautiful places that, of course, all Australians want to see protected. And my family got to enjoy that. My family were welcomed there by the Bunjama people, who, sh who sh you know, are proudly displaying and allowing people to be able to go and visit these sites. Of course. Of course this issue needs to be dealt with. Of course Australians want to see these sites protected. But what we're seeing with this legislation is it's actually undermining what all Australians want to see, which is the protection of cultural heritage. And we're undermining it through poorly drafted legislation that this government here could actually rule out implementing Senator across the country. Simon, your time has expired. Senator Pratt. This motion from those opposite is nothing more than rank, smelly, political opportunism. The motion that they have brought to the chamber today, attacking the Commonwealth government for a policy position to implement in the future policies to protect Aboriginal heritage based on a scare campaign that those opposite have sought to amplify back in Western Australia is absolutely disgusting. So let's go through some facts about the Western Australian, West Australian changes. 
Before these new laws came into place, it was already unlawful to harm Aboriginal cultural heritage. And that has not changed. What has to change is the upholding of that heritage in the same way that someone's house may well have protection. You may well have a colonial house that has heritage values attached to it that might well have some protection under laws that do not uh, provide protection for Aboriginal culture and artefacts on smaller lots of land. Smaller lots of land of less than 110 square metres. So think about it this way. Colonial heritage has more protection on most lots of land in Western Australia than Indigenous heritage under this bill. In fact, the, the bill before us reduces the bill before the West Australian Parliament reduces uh, the, the land uh, that is actually uh, available uh, that's governed by these Aboriginal protection laws. Consultation on the Act and the regulations took place over five years. 1,100 people attended 90-plus workshops as part of the co-design process for the regulations. But here comes the cincher. 220 uh, submissions, hundreds of meetings. Here's the cincher. The National Farmers Federation and the Pastoralists and Graziers Association were invited to attend these workshops. They decided not to attend. But I, uh, as Tony Booty reported to the parliament, I must say, one of their policy officers in the consultation for the bill that came uh, to the consultation said they thought the consultation process was exemplary. So, in this context, uh, Tony Booty, the minister in Western Australia, said, we've taken notice of the farmers and pastoralists who attended the workshops and gave us their advice. The peak organisations may not have attended or were not notified or, or we were notified that they would not attend. However, we did listen to the farmers and pastoralists and as part of that feedback, we developed a tiered system that will allow for the better processing of applications for uses of land. So, as you well know, you should know, pastoralists and farmers will not be impacted by most of this legislation. This is legislation that the state opposition did, in fact, vote for. So while we are not here today, you well and truly argue that you call on me to say, don't defend the state government. Well, the simple fact of the matter is I do. Sure, there are some problems with the implementation, but the state opposition voted in favour of the legislation. The federal opposition still has the gall to stand here and pretend that it stands up for Aboriginal heritage while it brings such motions to the floor. It is absolutely galling because when you contribute to undermining uh, Aboriginal heritage protection by bringing debates like this to the chamber, you make it so much harder for people who are trying to stand up for their culture and their rights. So shame on you, shame on those opposite for the motion that they brought to the chamber here today. Senator Pratt, Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. But what a mess that Labor has created in the West. Labor's new Aboriginal cultural heritage law was no doubt made with the best of intentions towards Indigenous people. The problem is that Labor didn't give a damn about anyone else. It's just another rushed, emotive policy. As a result, Western Australia's key industries are paralysed with uncertainty. Farmers can't farm, miners can't mine, builders can't build, even councils can't plant trees for the environment, even homeowners can't do things on their properties the rest of us take for granted, all based on if it goes below ground surface by 50 centimetres. 
Of course, this is really about money rather than culture, because most of this land has been farmed, mined or lived on for over a century and has no connection to the Aboriginal culture. The Western Australian newspaper last month reported the owner of a residential block in Exmouth has been quoted $20,000 for an Aboriginal heritage survey. The Daily Mail reported um, a man from uh, today eh, was fa facing nine months jail and $20,000 fine just for building a creek crossing to enable all weather access to his property. This is apparently because, according to local Aboriginal mythology, the creek is home to rainbow serpent that might be scared away by the crossing. This is what will send a man to jail. Mythology? How ridiculous we accept this in the 21st century. It's madness, and it's the Albanese government wants to expand it on a national scale. There's only one silver lining to this um, stifling black tape in Western Australia. We're getting a preview of a life in Australia with a voice to parliament. It's not looking pretty. It's divisive on race, it's destroying homeowners' property rights, and it's holding industries critical to our economy hostage. One Nation will fight to rid Western Australia of this divisive, racist policy. Senator Smith. Thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy <coughs> President. You would be wrong if you thought this was the only example of Labor imperilling the future of regional Western Australia. You would be very, very wrong if you thought this was the only example. We have examples of cuts to regional road funding from the Kimberley through the Pilbara to the Great Southern of Western Australia, examples of Labor cutting regional road funding. We have the very, very live issue of Labor now embarking on delivering its election commitment to ban live sheep exports. And now we have an example where WA Labor, supported by the federal Labor government, would want to rob West Australians, not just in regional Western Australia but throughout the state, of their future prosperity. The prosperity of Western Australia is built on two things, our mining and our agriculture. And this Aboriginal Heritage Cultural Act law and the poorly implemented uh, regulations will go to the heart of destroying West Australian wealth and future prosperity. And let me just put that in context because, and I don't want to be unkind to the rest of the country, but the success of our country as a whole is largely built on the success of Western Australia then after that Queensland. So watch out Queensland. You're quite right, Senator Scar. Watch out Queensland. Let me just put this in context for you, because what we are talking about here are not sort of little issues that may or may not cause someone harm. This has the potential to go to the core of West Australian prosperity, undermining our mining industry and undermining our agricultural industry. Well, I'll take that interjection from Senator Cox, because I would like to come back to the facts and figures about why Western Australia is so important for our national prosperity. But I think at this point, I think at this point, Senator Cox, it probably is timely to read into the Hansard what Senator Cox had to say and what the state Greens member of the Upper House Parliament had to say on the 29th of June about the WA Labor Party's Aboriginal cultural heritage laws. What did they say? Reported in the West Australian newspaper, they called them flawed. They called them flawed. And the West Australian newspaper went on, went on to say that Senator Cox, supported by the state Upper House Greens member, Mr Brad Pettit, savaged the legislation for failing to do enough to protect Indigenous artefacts and sacred sites. That's right, Senator Cox says. That's right. So curiously, curiously, you have the Greens and coalition senators in agreement that Labor's agricultural heritage laws are bad for Western Australia. Senator Fatima, Sen 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 Fatima Payman made an interesting observation. She talked about how the laws were a common sense balance. Well, unfortunately, balance is very much in the eyes of the beholder, very much in the eyes of the beholder. And these laws are not balanced. We're all agreed 
that cultural heritage preservation is very important, both for Western Australia and nationally. But these rules, these new laws, go to undermine that very, very sensible balance that has been at the heart of West Australian success and prosperity. Who is the person that should be... I'm sorry, Senator Smith. Uh, Senator Cox, your point of order? Yes. Um, I won't be um, misquoted by Senator Smith. My oh. comment was actually Cox, that we Senator need Cox. a balance. You, there, so there I'd like no the hand side to reflect that, please. Resume your seat. Senator Smith. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Who is the one person who should feel most aggrieved? Who is the person who should feel most aggrieved about where Western Australia's cultural heritage laws are up to? That one person is the former Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Ben Wyatt. Because when the draft laws were prepared back in 2020, he said, I am confident that we have a path forward to introduce historic reform that re reflects modern values. That's what Mr Ben Wyatt, the former Minister for Indig Indigenous Affairs, had to say, who was also the State Treasurer, who is now a board member of Rio. And Woodside. And Woodside. Done very well for himself. Congratulations, Mr Wyatt. But he would feel most aggrieved because his comments about how these laws would be historic and lead to sort of modern values completely wrong. Completely wrong. These, <coughs> these laws have been introduced in a way Senator that is Smith, unplanned, your time unprepared. has expired. The time for discussion also has expired. And I'm, I